So I've heard people ask questions very similar to this over and over in the semester. And this basically comes down to like, why is it that we can't just say like x1 plus x2, why is not that just the same as 2 times x? Now it comes out more in questions when they say something like, let's add two dice together. And if you have one dice, you might say, well, one dice would be d. And if you're adding another dice, that would be another d. And so you might just say, well, can't we just say that would be like 2d? Or adding two together is the same thing as adding by two. But it's not quite that simple. You can't actually do that. The reason why is it's much more accurate to say it's d1 plus d2. Okay? And that's not going to be the same as 2 times just your first die. Because you get different results on each dice. And because you're getting different results, you can't just say two times the first result. You actually have to add two different results together. Now, when you start doing your expected value and standard deviations, it might seem like maybe you'll still get the same results. But let's see why you're not going to. Let's look at an actual... Actually break it down and go back to the basics and see how it's different. So what if we add... Let's see what happens if we add two dice together. So this is actually a problem we've done in a previous learning packet. What happens if you add two dice together? For me, it's easiest to look at the combinations if I kind of draw a table. So on die one, I could get one, two, three, four, five, six. Die two, one, two, three, four, five, or six. Then I see what the sums are. So I can get sums like a two, a three, a four, etc. And so I can find out all the different possible values for the sum, which was written as an x before. Let's just write this in. This is for the sum. So for a two, there's only one way to get a two. So one out of 36 possibilities. For like a six though, I have all of these sixes. So there's five different ways that I can get a six. So five out of 36. And we can graph it. You can see here, this is what it looks like. And the expected value for adding these two dice together is we'd have to do each number times its probability. Plus all the way up to the last one, which would be 12 times 1 out of 36. That's how you find expected value, right? So that gives us 7. And the variance is you have to take each value each value minus the mean, so 2 minus 7, times the probability, which is 1 out of 36, and you square this value minus the mean. Until you get to the very last one, which would be 12 minus the mean of 7, squared times 1 out of 36, which gives me, which is 5.834. So we found the mean of adding two dice together is 7, and we found the variance of adding them together is 5.834. Okay, now let's compare that to what happens if you take one die and times by 2. So if we take one die and times by 2, what are your possibilities? So the die can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And the die times 2, your possibilities are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And the probability for each one, well, each of these were originally had a probability of 1, 6. They're still all equally likely with a probability of 1, 6 for each one. So that's our probability distribution. If I was to graph it, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12, and they each have probability of 1, 6. So notice, this is a very different situation from what we have before. We have different possible values, we have different probabilities, and we have different graphs. So it's a very, very different situation. Even though it might seem similar, add two dice or times one die by two, you get different possibilities with different probabilities, which means that our mean and standard deviations are also going to change. So the mean of 2 times 
one dice is going to be each value times its probability added up and that is going to give you seven so the averages actually stay the same either way which can be slightly confusing but the variance is we'll have to do again each value minus the mean squared times its probability which equals 11.668 notice the sand or averages stay the same the mean stay the same the variances change from 5.8 to 11.6 so that was going back to the basics and finding it the long way now let's see what happens if instead we just use our rules for expected value and variance. So our rules say, or let's start with this, so let's say if you have one die, then the mean for one die is going to be 3.5. And the standard deviation for one die, sorry, the variance for one die is 2.917. You can do this by actually just kind of going through and doing it the long hand way, just like we did up above. Okay. But that's what they are. Okay, so now let's say if we add two dice, then the mean for adding two dice, D1 plus D2, is you would do the mean for the first die plus the mean for the second die. That's what our rule says. You just add each of the individual means. And each mean would be 3.5. So 3.5 plus 3.5 gives me 7. Okay, that's what we got up above. Good. The variance, if you're adding two things, as long as they're independent, and rolling two dice should be independent, they shouldn't affect each other, is you just add each of the variances. Okay, so add each of the variances. 2.917 plus 2.917 gives me 5.834. So again, just what we found up above. Okay, now let's see what happens when you multiply one die by two. So the mean for two times one die. Well, the two just comes out for mean, so it's just 2 times the original mean, so 2 times 3.5 gives me 7. Okay. Now for the variance. The variance is for 2 times 1 die. When you have a number in here for the variance, it comes out, but it comes out squared, so it comes out as 2 times the variance of 1 die. So 2 squared times the variance of 1 die, which was 2.917. And that's why we got 11.668. So notice, very big difference. Adding two dice together or multiplying one dice by two, the variance changes.